Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We're back for part two at the Super Potato in Osaka. And we're going to pick up on the PlayStation end of things. We have PS1 down this aisle, PlayStation 2, PS3, and PSP here. So we'll start with the PS2 section. Now, unfortunately, I can't go too uh, into detail in this area. Otherwise, we would be here uh, for a, a few hours. And as you can see, it's quite loaded. A lot of a lot of common stuff, but a lot of good stuff. And some stuff was actually new to me. There we have Mushihime-sama, the Bug Princess, and then we have the Capcom Classics Collection. None of this stuff is particularly new, but here we have, what is this, Castlevania. I believe this is Lament of Innocence. And then we have this metal uh, Xenomorph. That thing is freaking cool. And then up above, we have Mark of the Wolves for the PS2 with the Neo Geo Stick 2. But this is what I'm talking about. The Typing of the Dead Zombie Panic. I haven't heard of this one before, and they also had the bundle with uh, the keyboard. But I wonder what kind of differences it has between uh, this one and the, uh, the original Dreamcast version. And then we have, what is this, uh, Gauntlet Dark Legacy. That's one that I would like to play. And then R-Type Final. And then up on the screen here, uh, they have the Tales of Destiny 2. And then look at this, uh, this, this freaking huge uh, Game Boy display. They also have one of these at the Tokyo branch up on the third floor where the arcade machines are at. I wonder what this was exactly used for because it has like a little slot in there. And then we have a display case. Now look at these bowling shoes for Super Mario World and a, like a click Pez uh, wannabe dispenser thingy. And then we have the Saturn and Neo Geo PS2 controllers. Highly collectible. And just a few uh, consoles here with the PS2 screen. And then some of their, uh, I guess some of their better titles. What is this? Uh, Thunder Force 6. That one I would like to try. And usually you could see uh, for a lot less at Surugaya. Their PS3 section was actually quite small, but that's okay because the retro was just, uh, it's just bleeding retro in this store. Then we have the PSP, a lot of great PSP titles that they had on hand. Like that uh, Gradius collection, and then what do we have up here? Well, there's the Gradius portable collection. But anyhow, let's make our way into the PS1 section. And again, th this section was actually like their biggest of all, you know, their their PlayStation um, products that they had. Just so much stuff here. And the great thing is like all the all the common games are, you know, you're, you're going to be able to easily find them here for the most part. Don't quote me on that. But <laughs> but look at this. Look at that Tomb Raider. Tomb Raiders. It's plural. Oh, man, I was I was I was going to pick this up. But it's not too big of a deal because I have the the North American uh, Saturn release, and we have the Rally Colin McRae. What else do we have here? Just a bunch of bunch of great stuff. This is a this is a legendary system. So much software, 3D games, 2D games, you name it, they got it. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. The Lawnmower Man, or Cyber War as it's known in Japan. And then Killing Zone, look at this. This game I remember uh, way back in the day, in the glorious late 90s. Never actually played it, but I remember seeing it at a, at a rental shop. And then this is like the other, the other area. You got all the Rockman titles, golf. You could easily spend hours alone just in the PS1 section if that's uh, if that's what you're hunting for. And then look at this, start, start, Startling Adventures by Capcom. I've, I haven't heard of this one either, and it's always nice to see uh, Capcom games that are not the, the norm, as well as this uh, Street Fighter 2, the movie. I, I've, I've heard of this one, and it's also available on the Sega Saturn, although I have not played it. Looks kind of goofy, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a big uh, Street Fighter 2 nut. That might be worthy of the collection. And then, oh, Reciprocal Heat 5000. This game actually has like a Marlboro and Budweiser announcements. It's kind of funny. I actually have that game too. And now we're going to make our way into the glorious showcase. And we're going to see what kind of, uh, 
what kind of wares that they that they're holding behind the glass here let's see we got in the hunt classic stuff Looks like a little kart racing game there at the end. Uh, image fight and X multiply for 14,000 yen. Symphony of the Night. Uh, and then Castlevania, the remake, remake. Uh, the deluxe pack of Salamander. I hear the PlayStation 1 is better than the Saturn one. I could be wrong on that. I have the Saturn version. We have Cotton in the back. What else do we have? That was another Capcom puzzle game. Busta Bros or something like that. Uh, I don't know what that puzzle game is, but it's 21,780 yen. Haven't heard of that one either. Then we have Dodonpachi. Freaking awesome shooter, that one. And Macross, Do You Remember Love? What do we have back there? I believe that's Strider. Then we have Double Dragon. I have that for the Neo Geo CD, and that game is freaking awesome. The Neo Geo CD version is, uh, is a lot less expensive, and I think it's uh, overall better. And then we have The Adventures of Little Ralph. Now, I got this off of PSN, and I got to say, for me personally, it's not worth that price. It's a... Uh, I don't know. I'll have to give it another try, but when I was playing it, I wasn't really feeling it. But a platforming game, you know, if that's up your alley, then that might be worth it i guess i don't know and then we got uh, herc's adventures and then forget me not that has an awesome cover it's so mysterious too but probably one that's not so easily uh playable uh, what else we have some horror games look at all this stuff sunsoft collection puyo puyo look at that puyo puyo that's probably the most expensive puyo puyo that i've seen and then the three wonders Oh man, that game is pretty cool. But that's also a part of the Capcom uh, collection, uh, compilation stuff on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox. And I believe it's also on the Capcom arcade uh, stadium thingy. Now, I believe these games are sealed. Look at that. And definitely feel free to pause. Lots to take in here. Man, oh man but you know honestly when I think about uh, P PS1 there's not too much more left that I want to add to my collection and I think the same goes for the Sega Saturn I'm pretty much at peak for both everything else I get is just icing on the cake but look at here we go Neo Geo oh man this is a freaking awesome system and you know what I picked up another AES. I originally had a North American unit and I sold it like like 10 years ago, but I ended up getting a, a Japanese model now. And yeah, man, um, I'm in the zone for this stuff right now. But the Neo Geo is definitely something of an acquired taste and I'll, I'll maybe I'll cover it in a future video, but um, I'm specifically going after certain games. So I, I really want the the Neo Geo collection to be curated to my uh, my gaming tastes and I'm a, I'm a 2d fighter uh, hardcore fan so this is like the perfect uh, the perfect system we got the Neo Geo CD titles Neo Geo CD is freaking awesome slow loading animations are cut but it makes up for it in the arranged soundtracks and then we have some loose Neo ROMs this little robot here and we're gonna make our way slowly mind you into the Neo Geo uh, showcase here look at all those pockets that's freaking awesome I had one of those back in its heyday paid like 20 bucks for it and we got some more loose carts and then we have a Neo Geo CD and let's take a look at the price here as we zoom in what do we got here 69,000 yen Holy smokes. I don't know. I, I paid a lot less, but maybe that one has something uh, <laughs> something special. But, but that's the thing. Um, you know, like, sometimes it just makes sense here. Sometimes it doesn't. It varies. It varies. Down in the bottom, we have a few uh, Sega goods with the in North American Sega Genesis there. How much are they asking? 18,480 yen. 
Then we have the Hamaru and Ukiyo uh, Neo Geo Minis. And then some pocket stuff here. I only actually had one pocket game throughout the whole time that I had it. And that was like a, the Sonic the Sonic game that was released for it. Which was actually not too bad. Pretty cool little boxes there. Then the Neo Geo CD. Look at all this greatness. And you know, I think the Neo Geo CD complements the AES perfectly. Because... Um, all the more the other games you know you can get on this platform for a lot less money and you get it and you gain an awesome uh, arranged soundtrack so we have matcha melee there it's freaking expensive waku waku 7 that's one that i would love to get but not a priority right now we got samurai showdown 4 for fifty nine thousand one hundred and eighty yen now about like back in 2018 that game was probably like half that price but the demand, it just uh, it just went up, you know. And we got the memory cards for 3,278 yen. That's not too bad, actually. Oh, man, look at this. What do I have? Uh, league bowling. Just all sorts of good stuff here. But the game that I'm really looking for is Mark of the Wolves. That's like a, that's a holy, that's like a, a holy grail. That's like a grail, a grail uh, piece for me. Freaking love the AES. And then let's take a look at some Wonder Swan. Now this is a, a system that I often overlook, but here we'll just take a, a quick a quick glance, I guess. And then uh, we have uh, the Virtual Boy. I don't know too much about uh, the Wonder Swan, although they do have a Makaimura game that I want. Look at this display, the Virtual Boy. One of these days, I don't know. We'll see. That controller is kind of interesting looking. But back to the Wonder Swan stuff. Really, there's only one game that I would like to have. And if I got one, I don't know, maybe the black and white version. I don't know about the, the colored version, but look at this. Makaimura for Wonder Swan. It used to be a lot less expensive, but it just kind of blew up. Of course, that was a few years ago. Now we'll make our way into the Game Boy goods. Look, at it's just raining Pokemon games. Look at all this. I actually do, I do appreciate this uh, display. It's just kind of a sight to behold. And then we have the display case here the showcase lots of great titles and actually you know the Game Boy is something that I've been paying more attention to um, these last few months and uh, my collection has has grown quite a bit <laughs> in fact I think I need to slow down but these Castlevania games on the Game Boy are freaking awesome the first one is so-so but the second one really uh, is is pretty pretty darn good but it's a little on the short side then we have the Rockman world games those are actually lower in price in the loose cart form, like a lot lower. And I usually see them at book off for about a thousand yen. Got some Zelda titles, Goemon on the Game Boy Color. That's a new one to me. I didn't know that. And then we have uh, some uh, some boxed uh, handhelds, some loose stuff there. And look at that, the Pokemon Edition ones. Game Boy Color, and then we have the original DMG. That's what I have. I got it for like 70% off. A few scratches on the screen, um, on the outer screen, but nothing, nothing major. Then Game Boy Advance. Look at this. Freaking awesome system, this one. This one has a, like a lot of noteworthy uh, modifications that can make it, that can make the experience a lot better. And look at all this. Oh man, this is so cool. You know, when you're when you're browsing stuff like this, you definitely um, if you're serious about this collecting business, then uh, yeah, you're gonna need at least half the day just being in this store. Especially if you have a long list. That's why I recommend you know come with the list with the list of what you want, and then go to all the different shops in the area and compare prices, and then uh, and then make your choice. You know. But this is definitely a shop worth worth visiting. I mean, this video is evidence of just all the greatness that they have. What is this Game Boy Gallery with? Uh, that's a new one to me. What else do we have here? Yeah, nothing, nothing that I really am too familiar with, honestly. Still, a lot of great stuff there. And then here we have another display case. We have the Akuma figure there and a Rockman X Nendo. Oh, 
what else here? We all GameCube. This is the one system that I I always forget. Although it is a legendary one. I think the reason why I forget about the GameCube is because I already have everything that I want for it. And then here we have what Game Boy Advance. Another awesome system. Actually, I remember I got this one close to launch way back in the day. We got Sonic Advance 2 back there and Makaimura, Cho Makaimura Advance. And then we have House of the Dead Pinball front on the front there. I wonder if that's any good. And then the Castlevanias and Contra. I never actually tried the Contra port on, uh, on the Advance. I wonder if that's any good. It's got to be good, right? It's Contra. It's the Advance. It's the perfect thing. Game Boy players there. Look at that. We got another rack of odds and ends. Playstations, Wii's. And then here we go. Game Gear. We're getting close to the Sega goodness. Although I hear the, the Game Gear itself, the actual console is kind of notorious uh, with the, the bad uh, capacitors and whatnot. But I used to have one of these way back in the day. I actually totally forgot forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I had fun with it. Although it was a freaking hog when it came with the batteries. But there, there are a few games that I would like to uh, revisit as well as, you know, uh, try out. A lot of Sonic games on, on this uh, portable. I wonder how that Land of Illusion is. Mickey Mouse games are a little bit of a, a guilty pleasure of mine. And then we have a few boxed games. But let's go ahead and have a look at the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast stacks. Look at this. Oh man, oh man. So much stuff. So much good stuff. So much not so good stuff. But just a lot. And and then we'll we'll briefly cover the Dreamcast. Because the, th the main thing that I want to wanna focus on is uh, on the showcase there. And never mind my little cameo there in the in the corner, but yeah, I mean the Dreamcast, I pretty much have everything that I want, with the exception of like maybe two titles, with one of them being JoJo, the 2D Fighter by Capcom, the limited box there, and a few other limited editions. But look at this case. Oh Jesus! Like walking into a candy shop. And let's get it underway. What do we have here? What do we have? We got the older Sega stuff down below. Look at that funky Strider artwork for the Master System there. We got those Hori pads that are also for the PC Engine and Famicom. And then two Game Gears with one having an LCD mod. Probably had the caps replaced as well. Then the glorious uh, Mega Drive and Mega CD. Oh man, look at all this. I think, uh, look at that Gunstar Heroes for the Game Gear. I wonder how that port is. I never actually played it and I never bothered to look it up, but, you know, seeing it here kind of just piques my interest. More of a curiosity thing, though. Then we'll make our way onto the Dreamcast, the Ikaruga, US Shenmu, Spawn, Border Down in the back there. What else do we have? I actually have that little accessory there that allows you to connect a, a different controller. A Saturn or, the, or a PlayStation controller on the Dreamcast. And then here we have our Sega Saturn titles. I mean, for, for Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, and PlayStation, anything that I'm going to want is going to be behind these display cases. Most of the common stuff, which is a lot of great stuff, mind you, a lot of great games I have. Like this, look, look, there's four titles of the Psychic Assassin Tarumaru. Oh man, the only thing that's standing in between me and this game is that price. <laughs> I have a demo with the game on it and, uh, you know, the game, I do like the artwork, but the gameplay is, is so-so, but it's good enough to experience, but for that price, I don't know. I'd rather spend that money on Garou Mark of the Wolves for the AES. But who knows, maybe one day I'll, I'll get lucky. And then just kind of going back here. 
What else do we have? We got Sonic Racing. I need to get that. That's one of the more common games that I'm missing. I do like the soundtrack in that in that game. It's so funny. But the hardware, look at this. So much hardware. They have it either loose or in the box. You know, you you name it. They they're gonna have it. And there's other hardware, you know, just scattered throughout the store. But this is mainly where they had a lot of stuff. Here we have some. Uh, here we have some controllers. Uh, what is it? Uh, aftermarket. Look at this. Is for Wii and the GameCube. And then down below, AC adapters for the Mega Drive, amongst other things. But look at that. I do love like the the Sega uh, design for these things. Got some wireless controllers for the Super Famicom. Probably infrared, so you know you better be facing the console directly. And more controllers. Look at that wave bird that by Hori with the blue camo. That was cool. Some RF. That's old school. And look in the bin. A Duo R. For what? One, uh, 16,000. And it looks to have a problem on the CD end of things. Got a 360 there in that bin and some super scopes. Look at that in the box. Loose. They got you covered there. And then we have the Mario Paint mouse pad. That also came in a separate bundle with a different game. And then just all sorts of joysticks. Look at this. And funky controllers there. I'm not sure what those things are. Twin Famicoms, Famicoms. What's the price here? 16,280 yen. Although, I, I, if I were to get a Twin Famicom, I would like to get the red one. The red one's pretty sleek. Although, the black one is safe. And then we have a top-loading AV Famicom for 9,878 yen. Now, some of these are actually uh, AV modded. And it, it'll usually have like a sticker just kind of uh, detailing that bit. Got some Kirby going there. I believe that was on the Super Famicom. Yeah, now this is the, the Twin Famicom that I would like. And that's the original disc system there. Look at this bad boy. Orangey red looking. 21,780 yen. Above that, all these Super Famicoms. And if you want it in the box, look at that. Straight up stacks of this stuff. It's Nintendo 64, look at that. It's looking like a day one launch up in here. And then we have uh, the glorious GameCube. I actually sold two of my GameCubes, but I have my, my orange spice one. And the Nintendo 64, look at that. They also had 64 consoles down in the, in the regular uh, aisle there. And then we're just kind of back here to the Super Scope. Not sure what these things are here. But they look well built. <laughs> And then, yeah, PC Engine, PC FX, MSX. Lots of good stuff here. The PC FX is such a funky looking system. Look at that thing. I think NEC got a little bit of flack for that design. And then we have the PC Engine. Great system, that one. And then here we have the turbo stick. I was totally meaning to pick that up, but in all my excitement, I forgot all about it. Got the glorious CRTs, Neo Geo CDs, Mega CD2, the original Mega CD up there. What are they coming in at? 45,980 yen. And 27,280 yen. So these Neo Geo CDs are, are a lot less expensive than the one that we saw. Perhaps the one that we saw is a North American variant. And then we have the Mega Drive 2 here. The Mega Drive 2 has such a great design. And then uh, the original coming in at 6,000. That's not too bad of a price. That's, that's pretty much a hard off prices nowadays. And more Neo Geo CDs down there. Look at that. And a mission stick. Oh, wow, a mission stick by asking. Cool. Then we got the Dreamcast. Some more Sega greatness. Saturn, look at all these Saturns. Well-built system, that, that the Sega Saturn. And then the Sega Mark III, Master System. 
and some wireless uh, Saturn pads, which are freaking awesome. But again, infrared, you better be facing directly and then a tub full of peripherals here, joysticks. Isn't this great to see? I mean, never mind like the pricing and all that. It's just kind of awesome to see all this stuff just kind of just kind of hanging out, I guess. <laughs> Twin sticks, look at that. Yeah, if you're visiting, you know, definitely uh, hit this shot uh, this shop up. But make sure to have space in your luggage or have a, a backup plan, like uh, maybe shipping things from Japan uh, to your homes and whatnot. And then just a whole bunch of controllers just just hanging out. Some pretty funky ones like like this one for the this is also available on the PlayStation but this Optec Pro Commander. And then this this is the another commando like for piano type playing. The piano style and then we have the blaster here. And a VGA box for the Dreamcast. And look at this funky controller. <laughs> oh man, that thing does not look cool at all. And then here we have a few more PlayStation goods. With the standout one being this Negcon. There, it also comes in a black flavor, and that's the one that, we, that I would really like. But look at this box. This is freaking straight up 80s uh, design. And look how well it looks, as well as this, like the Grip X. I actually ended up buying one of these at a Surugaya that's uh, down the way, which we actually will be doing. Uh, I'll be doing a video on that, so definitely keep a lookout. But anyhow, Super Potato in Osaka, highly recommended. Definitely uh, check them out. And as always, thank you for watching Retro Rewire. Ciao.